in a world full of beavers. Hundreds of them head towards the White House, and only Morgan Freeman can save the day with help from Liam Neeson and an all-star diverse cast of Aquafina and Jack Black, voiced by Chris Pratt. Hundreds of beavers now playing at this red carpet. It's 100% real. Oops, I was totally wrong. Mike Cheslick, I directed the film and I edited it and I did a bunch of After Effects work and I co-wrote it with the star Ryland Bricks and Cold Twos. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this movie because I only watched about 30 minutes and I wanted to save the rest for tonight. Yeah. It's so bonkers and hang and hinge, but it's so beautiful. Can you share like what started the whole process? I just loved silent films and cartoons forever and then uh, using available resources in uh, Wisconsin where we're all from, we just built the movie around what we had, which was snow, my buddies from high school that were willing to get hurt in mascot <laughs> costumes, and uh, I don't know, 10 years of After Effects broadcasting. I'm not very good at After Effects, but I am fast, and we knew we could do a lot of effects shot quickly if we uh, covered them in uh, grainy black and white, hence the uh, black and white silent look. And we're not very good at writing dialogue, so we went with a <laughs> silent film. And that took four years of working in Wisconsin uh, with Wisconsin backers and our buddies and a few people that I met at NYU. And uh, now the film is done and people are treating it like it's a real movie. <laughs> but it is a video I made on my computer. You really are. <laughs> um, how close are your friendships to make your friends do all of that in the snow? Well, it's called burning a bridge. <laughs> you have a friendship and you cash it in on a few favors that really just make it so that no one will ever want to work with you again, you know? You just spend that friendship on the movie in one big gamble that hopefully makes you so famous you can have a new group of LA friends and really <laughs> just forget who you are and never have to go back to Wisconsin. I'm of course kidding, we love our, we love Wisconsin and uh, we had a loyal group of beavers that helped us out over two winters and 12 weeks of shooting and 1500 After Effects shots. Why the beavers? Well, we wanted an animal that had a large base that could be uh, infiltrated at the end of the film because you need in a film a castle infiltration scene. Do you and have bases? Yeah, they have lodges <laughs> next to their dams, so that's where they raise their families in their lodges. <laughs> and they uh, disrupt the flow of water, which we obviously disagree with politically, and so we wanted to make a film where they got what's coming to them. So for the silent movie portion, was there any specific movie or actor that you were heavily influenced by? We love uh, Buster Keaton. We love Jackie Chan, who is not silent, uh, but uh, his, some of his best moments, he's not talking. And uh, some of his best moments, he is talking. He's dubbing himself in English. And uh, those are probably our favorites, and we're sorry we couldn't do that in this film. But overall, we were inspired by The Silence and by Jackie Chan. And uh, end of list. And Mario. And Mario? I think actually mostly the biggest star tonight is Mario. He inspired us primarily. For doing so much slapstick comedy, I bet it took a lot of storyboarding or a lot of planning. Do you guys have like a huge board of like where you plan it out and then share it with the public, your whole process? Yeah, that might be fun. It's uh, three big binders full mm. of uh, storyboards done in Storyboard Pro. Uh, so that was all done digitally but then printed out and brought into the woods. So I was trudging through the snow in the woods with our snowshoes and just three big binders of boards and we just shot the boards. No improv. Don't believe in improv, rehearsed this interview a hundred times, boarded this interview out. Uh, no jokes, no adding jokes, no make em ups, just strictly shooting the boards like disciplined animators uh, in a disciplined animation tradition. Oh, God. That's too bad. The star is here. Join us, Ryland. Howdy. This is why we don't have talking in the film. My name is Ryland Brixen Cole Twos. I was the co-writer and the fallen star of this major motion picture. You're the one who's doing all the action stuff in the movie, right? That is me, yes, unfortunately. How many injuries do you have on your body? Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds of injuries for hundreds of beavers. Has your friendship remained strong this whole time? No. <laughs> Of all the stunts in the movie, which one has been your worst one and or your favorite one? Worst injury? Uh, frostbite is probably the worst. 
Uh, my favorite injury? Uh, <laughs> you had brain surgery at one point. What? No, brain surgery. Are you kidding? No. It was you know, unrelated to the film. Oh, God, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> But I would say that was my favorite injury, was the brain injury. Who designed the cat, the, 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 the fish, the doll fish thing? Oh, the, 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 the fish puppets? The fish puppets, the raccoon guts. That was Brandon Kirkham, wow. who really helped prop up this entire movie. Um, One of the few professionals on the film. Yes, he actually works uh, on Broadway for the Lion King show. Oh my god. Yes. So we got him, which, he, again, he really legitimized this whole production. This frog puppet he made is like the star of the show. It's in like two shots, and he made this beautiful frog puppet that has an almost a Burl Ives quality. It could have hosted the entire film, and we could have given it a number, like a little song or something. We didn't, because again, we stuck to the boards <laughs> and, do, and don't do it. I think one day that frog puppet will be hosting the Oscars or something. <laughs> Just, again, Brandon Kirkham propped up this whole movie in charge of the puppets. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of drunks from Wisconsin. Uh, hey, I'm Kurt Ravenwood. I'm the producer, one of the producers of Hundreds of Beavers. There were a lot of us. <laughs> How did they convince you to become involved in this project? Uh, we met at a Milwaukee Film Festival in 2018, and we got really drunk in a basement bar, and they pitched me this film, their next film called, uh, they didn't have the name of it yet, but they pitched it as The Revenant But Funny. And I heard it, and I was like, all right, let's do it. The Revenant, but funny. but funny. And it went from that to silent movie. Yeah. Bugs, funny, yeah. silent thing, Looney Tunes. What has been the most amazing experience this whole thing? I don't know where you could start with this. Oh, my God. I mean, we've been on the road with this movie since 2022. Oh, wow. Uh, fall of 2022, and we've we've just gone to every festival we could. Brought the beavers along, <laughs> wrestled the beavers, tussled with the beavers. Uh, we went to Europe for three weeks and toured with the beavers, and we've just been having. This is actually our very last stop. Oh, yeah. So are you, are you done with beavers now? We're done wrestling them. You know, now now hopefully the movie you know can can live on its own uh, without us wrestling beavers everywhere we go. So when you try to explain to somebody this yeah. movie has no idea what it is, what do you usually say to them? Well, the first thing I say is it's called Hundreds of Beavers, and then people tell me they're, they think I'm like an adult film producer. So that's the first step. I have to get them over that. And then I say it's a black and white slapstick comedy about fur trapping, and that only, <laughs> that only goes so well. And then I, then I tell them, but wait, it's all the, all the animals are, are full of grown men dressed as animal mascots. And they're still listening to you. They're still, usually they're still listening to me, and then hopefully they go and look up the trailer, because even I have a hard time describing what this movie is. One of the things, my favorite things, is looking at all the props and the costuming. Yeah. How did you get the costumer involved in this and how did you pitch the idea to the costumer? Oh man, I mean the costumer is just our friends in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, okay. you know? Yeah, there's, it, depending on the costume, it was many, many different people. Uh, and it's, it's really just a group of artists uh, in Milwaukee and in LA that made all the costumes and all the props and all the puppets. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's like a true indie in that way. Personally, my favorite is the fish. Yes. I think that's hilarious. Yes. And the raccoon guts really got to me. So what happened to the raccoon guts? I can't tell you. Ah! Yeah, I've got them under lock and key in case we're ever famous someday. I can make a lot of money off those raccoon, <laughs> those raccoon guts. No, just kidding. I have no idea where they are. Now, I'm in California. Mm -hmm. i never seen snow. So You've I can't never seen snow. No. Okay, all right, all right. So I can't even imagine how it was like to film in so much snow. Yeah. Like. How difficult was it, like, dragging all the props around, organizing people, trying to keep them warm as a producer? How are you keeping, yeah. keeping them safe and warm and happy? I mean, I mostly stayed at the production office. <laughs> no, I mean, it was like, there'd be like six to ten guys out in the out in the woods in northern Wisconsin, the uh, upper peninsula of Michigan, and they would just, like, travel with the snow and find good places where they could film, oh. rent cabins. A lot of people in Wisconsin were very kind and let us shoot on their land. Yeah, it was, a, it was really fun. Uh, Rylan did get a little bit of frostbite. That is true. He got a little bit of frostbite on his toe, but he's okay. He's okay. Encourage him to watch hundreds of people because I already love the movie. 
<laughs> thank but you, thank you. For yourself, uh, after the whole tour, talking to so many people, yeah. what do you want to tell people now? I would tell people that, you know, I recently read a headline that said uh, people are just tired of franchise films and movies that all feel the same. They want weird content, they want original content, they want films that feel like nothing they've ever seen. This is that, made by real people in Wisconsin, and if you want to support that kind of filmmaking, come out and see it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for guys. Thank, thank you to you guys yeah. for filming it, getting frostbite in the snow because it was amazing. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope you guys get to do more films. Thank you so much. Your message or your apology to the beavers. That be okay? I will not apologize. Island, <laughs> no. would you like to apologize? Do you have anything you'd like to say based on the accusations that you've killed hundreds of beavers during the shooting of this film? Maybe a public statement that where you could, you know, clean the air, right the water, right the wrongs. Yes, I will clean the air, and uh, what I'll say is I am forever sorry to these beavers, not just these beavers, but hundreds of beavers all over northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan. I'd like to publicly apologize to PETA as well. I know they've been on our ass since day one, and I'd just like to say that I'm sorry, and I'm going to write a check for $75 to beavers. <laughs> Yay! And the traditional Midwestern city, Los Angeles, California. <laughs> so if you heard the movie was good, lower your expectations. <laughs> that was just like pity from the internet. So did who heard it? Did you hear about this in a real way or like uh, the poster here? Who heard about this on YouTube.com? HTTP <laughs> backslash backslash www.youtube.com. Anyone care about it there? Show of hands. Who heard about it from my producer's marketing campaign on Instagram? Oh, no one, Kurt. That's not how anyone hears about this movie. A big boo for the head of marketing. Boo. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, pretend you liked it if you didn't. Thank you for coming. And everybody, just relax. There's no point to the movie, so just turn off your <laughs> stupid brain. <laughs>
one storyboard per shot. Uh, okay, that's all the time we have. Oh, wait, the venue is allowing me time for one additional question from you. Yes. Well, I'm a motion graphics editor. Yeah! Let's talk. Let's get everyone else to leave by getting so many ready. How did you go through the process of rendering everything? Thank you for asking that. Thank you for asking that. During the render time, people will say, oh, why don't you get a nice processor so it renders quick? No, no, I need that time. Much like the LA Drive, the rendering time is when you step outside and you think, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm working with my friend from high school on a film. It's a really, it's, again, it's a time for you and God to say this is stupid. <laughs> There's a film that has a message out there that you're not making. And so you want to add a little, like, you want to add one pixel of camera blur to every shot to extend your render time. It, it about triples the render time. And if you do that, you get more time for little croissants, little treats, go on a run. You can make yeah, so you want to maximize treat time by, uh, you know, adding a one pixel of camera blur on everything. Okay, that's all the time we have. Oh, actually, the venue is adding one final question. From that guy! Uh, what was your favorite sequence of shoes? Didn't like any of it! Next question! Yeah! Yeah! Are the beavers... Yeah! What? Are the beavers Christian? Someone else! Someone else! <laughs> Because they have a large home base that can be infiltrated in the third act of a movie. <laughs> I says in film school, day one, castle infiltration in your third act. No day two, you're a, you graduated. <laughs> yes, Max Landis. <laughs> Everything that was shot on green screen was in the woods. We put a green tarp in the woods. So even every, if it was daylight, it was a green tarp hanging from a tree, and uh, we were still cold. It was still negative 10 for those shots. Yeah, question from John Landis, what's that? <laughs> How cold was it? It was so cold. It's a joke. Invent a joke. John Landis is here. It was so cold that that I. It's not a joke. It froze my balls off. He <laughs> actually got a frostbite. No, a joke structure. It would be like it's so cold that Dilu uh, that like Dilu people people who live there vacation in Duluth. That would be like the joke. You know? <laughs> Next question. Did I achieve joke structure? All right. Thank you. All right. That's all the time we have. Oh, wait. <laughs> it was negative. It was below zero for nine days in a row at one point. This was shot over two winters, uh, twelve weeks over two winters. There was a nine-day period where it didn't go above zero. Ryland checked the temperature in Antarctica, and it was warmer in Antarctica than it was in northern Wisconsin. That is true. Another round of applause. <laughs> from me speaking directly to the audience. So, you know, just, you gotta make a choice. All right, that's all the time we have, except for you. Will there be a commentary version? We recorded three commentaries already. The commentary, the drunk commentary, the wasted commentary, and a fourth morning after sober, apologetic, commentary. Those are already all recorded. And we're going to charge you so much to hear it. So much. Okay. Thank you all so much for coming. We're just going to sit through this guy's question and we're all going to go to the nickel mine next door. If you heard that the after party was at Mom's, you were lied to. It's at the nickel mine. Yes, sir. Uh, what are some of your biggest influences? We'll talk about that at the nickel mine. <laughs> But it rhymes with Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming!